Hello, I'm Becky Barge, Senior News and Social Media Reporter for Cosmetics Business, and it's my great pleasure to welcome you to Cosmetics Business in conversation with Accelerate. Today, I'm joined by Dr. Cara Treasure, Founder and CEO of Accelerate, and Chris Longmore, Scientific Account Manager at Accelerate. Hello, Carol. Hi, Becky. Nice to see you. And you. So to begin, do you want to tell our viewers a bit more about the company and yourselves? Carol, would you like to start? Yeah, sure. Um, I, I guess I've been working in the field of replacing animal testing for over 25 years now since I did my PhD at the Frame Lab at the University of Nottingham. Um, always been really passionate about the subject and founded Accelerate with my colleague Bushra Sim back in 2008. Um, with a mission to accelerate the world's transition to 100% animal free testing. Um, this has been really important to us, not only from an ethical standpoint, but also from a scientific view. Um, we feel that it's so important to make sure that the traditional animal tests are replaced with scientifically advanced methods. So we're replacing it with something better um, rather than settling for anything that's second best. Um, so we've built up the company over the last 12 years. It's been an a exciting, sometimes challenging journey. And uh, we've got a team of 17 scientists and support staff now at our headquarters in Cheshire in the UK. Fantastic. Thank you. And Chris? Yeah, I've been working at Accelerate for uh, about five years now. Um, and I started my uh, journey with the company working in the lab with a lot of hands-on experience uh, with the, the routine sort of testing that we do, which is contract testing for companies and businesses, and also some of the R&D uh, work that we do. We occasionally uh, go for funding to develop new test methods, uh, such as a, a screen for acute toxicity. It was one of the first ones that I worked on. So I, I had a lot of experience hands-on in the lab. Um, and uh, recently I've moved away from that to uh, an account manager role where I, I speak to businesses try and describe what we do the best way to approach some of these strategies for, for non-animal testing so uh, yeah i've been let out of the lab now uh, <laughs> so i can join you in conversations like this oh, fantastic yeah well it's great to have you both here and so i'm sure most people watching this video are aware that testing cosmetics and cosmetic ingredients on animals has been banned in the eu for for quite some time now uh, so any products sold in the eu are by default cruelty free, but we're not talking about cruelty free here. We're talking more about animal free. So what is the difference between those two terms? Well, I think there's a couple of quite interesting points to pick up there. Um, one is that yes, of course, there's been a ban on animal testing for cosmetics in Europe since 2013. That's very well known, well established. But there are still challenges on that because, as you may be aware, the REACH regulation, which is the regulation governing the testing of ingredients and raw materials, still requires animal tests in some cases. There's always been a conflict between those regulations and you're probably aware that um, the European Chemicals Agency recently ruled that some animal tests were required for cosmetic ingredients. So I think that the assumption that everything in Europe is cruelty free is actually maybe a little less concrete than we thought it was and that we can't necessarily make those assumptions. I still think there are challenges there. And I think that um, it's definitely the case that the cosmetics industry wants solutions that are completely cruelty free. And that reflects consumer trends recently. As you know, there's a, a big global wave towards veganism, everything to do with vegan, ethical. You know, consumers are really taking the time now to do their due diligence before they buy products. And this is where it really fits into what we're doing on the animal free side and how it differs from cruelty free. Because if, for example, a company is developing a vegan cosmetic product, they would avoid animal testing, of course, but the in vitro tests that are carried out usually end up using some animal derived components, such as animal serum, antibodies, tissue extracts, 
And so it could mean that animals ultimately have still been sacrificed in order to carry out that test. And I think that it's just very important that we understand what we're dealing with, even though we don't have all the solutions available yet, we want to know that um, uh, we're going in with our eyes open, that companies are able to make informed decisions about what that test actually means and how it fits with the philosophy of the products they're developing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And of course, vegan certification of cosmetics is something that's increasingly sought out by consumers, you know, as you mentioned, Carol. And do you think consumers and, and even brands themselves are uh, maybe unaware of the fact that their vegan beauty product might have been tested on animal derived products? I would say yes to both of them um, from conversations with consumers and particularly when I've attended, say, cosmetic trade shows or, or a conference. I, I think people have been pretty shocked when they've learned that, you, yes, you're doing non-animal testing but that non-animal testing might still involve animal cruelty and animal, animal suffering. Um, I, I think brands and the consumers are becoming more and more informed, looking back more and more through their supply chains, trying to figure out exactly how not just the products treated, but the ingredients or the testing that happens in the past. So I think it's not just a thing for brands to be aware of, of their own products. It's also being aware of the ingredients they use, how have they been treated? Um, and yeah, I think very surprising for a lot of people that question of, well, the point of we know it's not been tested on animals, but an excellent question is how has it been tested? What has been done to it instead, which is becoming more and more relevant. Uh, as you mentioned, vegan accreditation is something that's very common when you look at Leaping Bunny, all these other things. They're really well-defined, uh, historically known labels and other accreditations. And this issue of it's not animal tested and also it doesn't involve any animal products or animal cruelty full stop. There's not been a, as neat a way to package it and define it currently because this is quite a new and emerging topic that people are interested in. Yeah, I can imagine people are quite shocked when they when they hear that. Mm. And so what kinds of common in vitro tests actually use products from animal sources? And are some more vegan friendly than others? Are they fully vegan alternatives? And what are the most vegan friendly methods out there? Well, with such a different variety of tests, different methods that they use, different endpoints that they're looking at, it is a, a huge range of answers to you know how vegan friendly are tests in such and such an area uh, and it might be helpful to talk about the types of animal products that might get used across certain tests so for example there is a, a test for eye irritation that uses a, a bovine eye it uses a cow eye as part of that that test process uh, which they would class as being a non-animal test but that's because it's a product that's taken from the slaughter industry uh, the cow has already been killed and although it uses this cow eye, they would still count it as a non-animal test method. Uh, in another area, uh, you might see uh, non-animal tests that use fetal calf serum as an additive to help grow the cells that are used. Um, and although that's also from the slaughter industry, arguably the way that fetal calf serum is collected adds to the suffering in that process. So that's another way that an animal component might be directly used and cause additional suffering. And then you've got instances where an animal product might be involved in the process, but isn't used directly in the test itself. So lots of tests for skin and eye irritation use reconstructed human tissue models, and there's no animal components in that test. But during the manufacture of those tissues, some animal components can be used. So it, it's not a very neat answer. There are some test methods which involve no animal uh, components whatsoever, uh, such as one for skin sensitization, um, which we can go into more details about uh, if we need to. But uh, I, I think the, the main point I'd want to get across is that it can be very, very complicated. You can look at related or very different tests that could come up with very different answers. And for that reason, at Accelerate, we've worked to try and create a scale almost of where specific tests might sit in terms of how cruelty-free they are, how 
close to completely non-animal they are, uh, just to make that a bit more clearer for this industry. Yeah, that's really interesting. Uh, Carol, can you tell us a little, little bit more about your, your point scale? Yeah, um, we felt this was a really important issue that's somewhat overlooked in industry. And we wanted to just sort of raise awareness about what is truly animal free, what makes an animal test really a non-animal test. Uh, and as Chris said, there are different levels of that. Not all non-animal tests are equal in terms of their ethical status. So we developed uh, our seven point scale for animal free testing really as a thought leadership tool to stimulate some debate and to provide transparency helping companies to decide when they're engaging with a CRO or when they're just deciding which type of test they're going to carry out so that they can be aware of where that test sits and to make a, de a decision that's relevant for them. So we have our, our seven levels essentially start at level one, which is a, an animal test, which clearly nobody wants to carry out. Then level two is um, things like the use of fetal bovine serum, which is almost universally used in cell culture to keep the cells alive. And there's been some uh, concern over fetal bovine serum for some years now, that the process of collecting that from the bovine fetus causes extreme suffering. And there have been, um, it has been under consideration that that might be reclassified as an animal procedure at some point. So here we are with, you know, lots of groups around the world doing cell culture with fetal bovine serum. And I think that, yes, of course, that's been an important historical move away from live animal tests. But it's only one level up, really, because there's still animal suffering involved. And then we go up through the other levels really um, on a gradual scale where we look, for example, as Chris said, at um, test components that may have been uh, requiring additional animal sacrifice. So, for example, rat liver extracts. Um, and then we've got components derived from slaughterhouses, such as the bovine eye. Um, and then we get to the higher end of the scale where the finished test itself is animal free, but some of the components may have been exposed during manufacturing to animal components. And then we move completely onto human relevant systems where we're just using human serum, um, human tissue extracts, which are obviously are ethically derived with, with full consent. But can you really consider that vegan? You know, I think we need to um, consider that as well. But if we weren't prepared to even use human derived products at this point in time, we have to recognize that we wouldn't be able to do much in vitro testing at all. And so I think that just brings us on to consider that we can't get it all right. We don't have it perfect yet, but it's so important to keep pushing for more progress and to make sure that we are making improvements while we're recognizing where the current challenges are. Yeah, I mean, absolutely, absolutely. And how does Accelerate intend to utilize this scale go going forward? Well, there's a number of areas. I, I think one of the things for us is just making sure that we're getting the message out there. Um, we very much don't want this to just be an accelerate thing. We want it to be a tool that is available across industry for other CROs, other companies to use. Um, we are finding that this effect is really snowballing now, that even though this has been a very important issue to us at Accelerate from day one, this whole trend now towards veganism is raising these questions for the first time in the mainstream. And I think that in the past we were probably considered quite extreme by wanting to eradicate all the animal components. But now, um, you know, a lot of major companies are recognizing that this is so important, not only from an ethical standpoint, but also to create scientifically more reproducible and more advanced systems. So one of the things we want to develop in the future is to collaborate more with some of the larger companies to maximise the impact that we can have on the industry and um, to really drive some positive change. 
Um, and we've already adapted some of the OECD test guidelines to animal product free conditions and had those accepted into the guidelines. That's certainly something that we'd like to do more of. And of course, those tests then are available out across the whole industry. Um, and I think the other, the other thing that we would like to do in the very near future is that on our website, each individual test page will have an explanation of the ranking on our seven point scale so that anybody that's considering doing that test can immediately see and understand where that fits in and whether it might be an appropriate test for them. Mm. So, you know, it's again, it's just it's so important to keep pushing forward as much as we can, but being transparent that there are some things that we can't yet achieve. Mm -hmm. Yeah, of course, of course. And if you are a cosmetics company looking to move away from animal products in your in vitro tests, you know, what's the best way to begin that journey? I think just starting to ask the questions is a, is a big step. Uh, being aware of the issue, uh, knowing that uh, animal free testing doesn't automatically imply uh, that there is no animal product or animal sacrifice involved. So if you're already using a, a testing house, a CRO for safety or efficacy testing, make sure that you speak to them, start asking the question. Uh, as far as I'm aware, uh, at Accelerate, we're the only CRO, the only testing lab that is seeking to do this kind of work, that's seeking to remove all uh, animal products uh, from the tests that we do. So by all means, please come and speak to us and we'd be more than happy to share what we know. And I think a really key point for us is this is a really important ethical issue, but we are also a, a science company, a science business. And it's really important to us that we maintain the integrity of any test that we do, whether it's a safety one or an efficacy one. So yeah, please come and speak to us because we, we absolutely want to help uh, meet those ethical needs. And we also want to do it in a way that's as good as, if not better than the tests that are already there, uh, both in terms of the accuracy and the, the validity. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Great, excellent. Well, thank you both so much. That's been it's been really interesting to to hear more about your animal free methods. And that was cosmetics business in conversation with Carol Treasure and Chris Longmore from Accelerate. If you'd like to discover more interviews from companies like Accelerate from across the beauty industry, head to our YouTube channel and hit subscribe or visit cosmeticsbusiness.com.